Michael Sprinkle, as a quick refresher, we've been talking about foundation and Instagram posts and pictures. Sprinkle is the one that Love tried to say would come in and clear up the issue of hovering over the date. Shart was like, well, was he the one actually capturing this supposed screenshot from Instagram? And then Love was like, well, uh, no, um, it would be one of our detectives. And we were all screaming, which detective? Name it now. Because if you try to come up with a name, you're just going to make something up. And eventually she said Gaither. So Sprinkle's the guy that takes everything that comes to him. And he helps form the theory of the case for the prosecutors to charge and try somebody. But we'll get to see this pre-trial. I had it in a playlist somewhere. Let me find it. And we can start looking at that. It'll be a good time. He's a new face. He's supposed to be called in the upcoming weeks to testify in this trial. And I do have a whole archive of stuff, you guys, that, you know, the trenches and troves of news happenings and pre-trial hearings and different things that Fonnie Willis was doing in relation to getting bills and funding for gang prosecutions or expanding laws. So the idea that you know, the Georgia Safety and Crimes Act. I forget exactly what it's called. But let us prosecute in one county for things that crossed county lines. Uh, we can watch all those, those arguments over time. I have a whole treasure trove <laughs> we can pick through. So let's switch over here. I'll drop the link to this if you want to bookmark it so you have it. It was 11 Alive that did a lot of the streaming of these pre-trial hearings. The sound quality is different, you guys, so it's going to be a little bit louder in a second. So change your sound. Be prepared. If you thought the IT was bad now, the sound's not so good back in the day. Here we go. We'll check this out. I do. First name Michael, M I C H A E L, last name Sprinkle, S P R I N K E L. Good afternoon, Deputy Sprinkle. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Deputy Sprinkle, would you please tell the court uh, where it is that you're currently employed? I'm currently employed at the office of the Fulton County, Georgia District Attorney. And what capacity are you employed there? I'm a deputy district attorney. How long have you served the Fulton County District Attorney's Office as a deputy district attorney? Since June 21st, 2011. And when did you first begin with the Fulton County District Attorney's Office? June 21st, 2011. What are your, uh, what area do you work in within the district attorney's office? I am the head of the unindicted homicide unit. I review all of the murder cases that come, it will not just murder all homicide cases that come into the office from the various police agencies in the county. And you made a distinction between murders and homicides. Why is that? Well, there's other, it's not just murder, there's felony murder, there's involuntary manslaughter, voluntary manslaughter, homicide by vehicle in the first degree, etc. Have you always served as the head of the unindicted homicide unit? No. Before serving as the head of the unindicted homicide unit, what did you do within the district attorney's office? For approximately the first three months of my employment in the DA's office, I was what was called, I was assigned to what was called at the time the complaint room, which was a 24 hour operation in which I would receive or be assigned cases that were coming in live, essentially. Somebody had just been arrested and the police would send a report. I would review it, speak with the officer, draft some sort of affidavit to summarize the case, and otherwise ready the case for first appearance the following morning. Following that, I was assigned to the non-complex division. I was in that division for three to six months. Uh, it sounds about right. Um, that involved the uh, prosecution of cases that were deemed non-complex, such as possession of cocaine and theft by taking under a certain value. After I was in, after my uh, time in the non-complex division, I was assigned to the complex trial division for about two, a little less than two years, signed to Judge Schwall's courtroom and then Judge Constance Russell's courtroom. Uh, and then in October of 2013, I was assigned to the unindicted homicide unit, albeit I was not the head of the homicide, uh, unindicted homicide unit, though memory serves correctly, I was the only attorney in the unit, so I suppose in 
away I was the head, given that I was the only one. Uh, but then as time went on, the unit expanded. Um, I, I was uh, promoted, and now I'm, and now there's more employees in the unit, and now I'm the deputy in charge of it. Within the homicide unit uh, of the district attorney's office, uh, do you receive um, cases involving uh, homicides where persons are charged or already arrested? Yes. And is it always the case that a person has been charged or arrested when you receive a file within the office? No. When you do receive a file wherein a person has been arrested, do you immediately present that case to the grand jury? No. Why is that? Well, we, uh, I want to ensure that the person who's been charged or arrested primarily committed the crime that it is alleged they committed uh, and that so in order to do that I inspect the case file uh, which primarily if not well I don't want to say exclusively because there are some things that I find on, on my own but uh, when I when I'm preliminarily looking at a case file I look at what the police have sent me their reports their interviews cell phone records the extractions of cell phones you know when the police actually copy the data out of somebody's cell phone uh, and I just go over all of this to make sure it's consistent with what has been a alleged in the arrest warrants. And do you always have all of the information within the case file given to you by law enforcement that you feel you need um, in order to fully complete the investigation on the homicide? No, not, no, not always, no. And what types of steps do you take to ensure that you have obtained as much information as you can? Do you, um, for instance, do you pull jail calls? Yes. Um, do you speak with witnesses? I do, on occasion, yes. Do you go to scenes? Objection, Your Honor, leading. Your Honor. Is it a preliminary matter? You're sharp back there. It's a preliminary matter. Thank you. I'll allow it. Over your objection. Thank you, Your uh, Do you go to scenes? Yes. Do you seek search warrants? Yes. And uh, do you present evidence to other entities for further testing? Yes. And does that always take uh, limited amounts of time, or is that sometimes more protracted? Well, it, it depends on the, the case and the um, volume of deficiencies that I have identified in the initial investigation. Bringing you to uh, the case involving the murder of Donovan Thomas, uh, do you recall when you received that case file within the district attorney's office? Would have been uh, late, probably December 2015, January of 2016, somewhere around there. It's actually probably going to be January of 2016, to be more exact. And without going into specifics about what that was, at the time that you received that case file, was it complete to your satisfaction as an assistant district attorney? Well, it depends on how you define the word complete. I, was it complete insofar as the Atlanta Police Department was concerned? I don't know. I know that they handed me everything that I asked for if there were some other documents that the detective, Detective Thorpe, still had in his file they just didn't give to me. I have no way of knowing that. As far as I know, what the Atlanta Police Department gave me was the complete case file. And did you review that complete case file that you received from the Atlanta Police Department? I did. Upon reviewing that case file, um, were you satisfied that the case was sufficient to present to the grand jury as you received it at that time? No. Uh, did you uh, take additional steps to investigate the case? Yes. Um, now, at the time, a person had been arrested on the murder, is that correct? Uh, yeah, at least one person had been arrested on the murder. And that person was the defendant, Shannon Stilwell? Yes. Jackson? Yes. Um, from what you were able to gather um, from the file that uh, Detective Fort gave you and from your subsequent investigation of the case that you did, uh, was Mr. Stilwell the only person of interest in that case? Was he the only alleged participant in the homicide? Well, he, he, no, there were three other. If we're talking about the people that had been charged by the police, there were four. Okay, go ahead. There was Antonio Sledge, Damiki and Garlington, Kenneth Copeland, and Shannon Jackson, a.k.a. Shannon Stilwell. Those were the four people that the police charged for the murder of Donovan Thomas in late 2015. And were you able to determine, based on your review of the file given to you by Detective Thorpe, what primarily those arrests were based on? 
They were primarily based on the statement of a young man named Spencer Wright. All right. And when you received gave a the fake file name. from Detective Thorpe, did you uh, endeavor to... All right, I feel like there's already a lot of stuff going on. So he says, look, I have no reason to believe I didn't get something. If they didn't turn something over to me, I wouldn't know that I don't have it. Um, and he referenced Thorpe by name, saying he got everything from Thorpe. Gaither said she left everything on the fifth floor or with Thorpe. So maybe holes in the, the link, the chain link here. Secondly, um, this name here, Spencer Wright, when Spencer Wright came to talk to detectives, he gave a fake name, Nick Robinson. So I don't really know when there was questioning about that, the state tried to object to that. I don't know if they think it makes someone less credible if they give a fake name. More, I, I would say someone's scared to tell who they are. Maybe they're snitching. Maybe they're credible, but for whatever reason, the state was fighting it. And then lastly here, this is December of 2022 that this pretrial is, is going on. Very long time ago. At that point in time, there was already in the news, Fonnie Willis was doing a bunch of press statements talking about how I'm here and we're going to clear up this homicide backlog. I've been working with GBI, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. You know, these are the statistics. They think that there's over 50,000 gang members in Fulton County and 70,000 in the state of Georgia. And I forget the exact specifics, but she said something, th there was a bigger percentage of unindicted homicide suspects still out and free than they had actually charged. So in the context of this, Shannon Alexander is sharing something with us. Thank you so much. I dealt with Sprinkle during my dad's murder case investigation. So first, I'm so sorry that you that that happened. And I'm imagining that this ongoing investigation that you now have to be a part of and help with certainly probably doesn't feel like closure. So sending some support your way for that. And now you're saying was just indicted. There's no court date yet. So that's finally on the horizon. And when I read your super chat, I'm making an assumption here, but I'm imagining it may have taken some years for you to get to this point, to even get an indictment, a first step towards closure in your dad's murder. So very interesting. Thank you so much for the chat and sharing this because it kind of puts it into perspective. They looked at four individuals, including Kenneth Copeland for the death of Donovan Thomas. And now in 2024, today, we are watching Kenneth Copeland on the stand who has an immunity deal and six other co-defendants in that room. And this is a pretrial hearing back in 2022. So here's Shannon, a real person who maybe her closure has been delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. Either because there aren't enough resources in general and or because the focus has largely been on this prosecution, this YSL prosecution. So everyone show some support to Shannon. That's not an easy thing to be going through. And thank you so much for sharing. Let's see what else happens with Mr. Sprinkle. To speak with Spencer Wright yourself. I did. Why is that? Well, so Spencer Wright, according to his statement, he witnessed the homicide, the drive-by shooting as he stood at a bus stop on McDaniel Street across the street from the barber shop, the parking lot of which Mr. Donovan Thomas stood when he suffered his fatal gunshot wounds. There was a surveillance camera mounted on that barber shop and the bus stop where Mr. Wright said he stood was in the viewing area of that surveillance camera. And when I looked at the footage, I didn't see anyone standing at the bus stop. I saw a cat at one point milling about the the, the bench at the bus stop. And I only bring that up to indicate that the clarity was sufficient to tell if there was a human being standing there. There was no human being standing there. So I, what I wanted to do was speak with Mr. Wright and show him, I believe I print off some still images. I don't think I brought in a, like a computer or something to show him the actual footage. So I, I wanted to speak with Mr. Wright and, and make sure, first thing I did is I wanted to speak with him and make sure that I was clear as to where he was standing. So I actually, before I confronted him with the fact that I didn't see him on the video, I had some 
printouts from Google Earth, and I asked him to point to the specific bus stop where he said he was standing. And when he did, he pointed to the bus stop that was depicted on the surveillance footage, at which point I said, but you're, there's nobody standing at that bus stop. And I was, he didn't really have an explanation for me. Did you receive that surveillance footage from the Atlanta Police Department? Yeah, yes. Did you, as you stated, you pulled Google Earth images. Was that something that you had received from the Atlanta Police Department, or is that something that you did to further your investigation? That was something I did to, to aid in my interview of Mr. Wright. I just pulled up Google Earth and took screenshots of the bus stop and the general area where the homicide occurred so he could uh, point to them and indicate where he stood, where he claimed to have been standing, I should say. And why did it concern you that he was not shown in the surveillance footage that you presented to him, yet he claimed to have witnessed the homicide. Well, he claimed that the bus stop was his vantage point from which he witnessed the four defendants that I mentioned earlier uh, occupying a vehicle and commit the drive-by shooting. If he wasn't standing at the bus stop, that would suggest he didn't witness it at all. Was there anything else that you were able to uncover during your ensuing investigation of this case that enlightened you more as to whether or not Mr. Wright was presenting to you information that was factually accurate. Yes, so after my interview with him, uh, I requested from the Atlanta City Jail, because that's where he was when I interviewed him. I interviewed him inside the Atlanta City Jail. He was an inmate there. The, from uh, somebody that worked at the Atlanta City Jail, whose name uh, I don't recall. Uh, but I. I asked him to uh, send me Mr. Wright's recorded jail calls, because it's like the Fulton County Jail, at least at that time, the uh, phone calls placed by inmates from the Atlanta City Jail were recorded. So I, uh, when I obtained Mr. Wright's jail calls, I found one that was placed, he placed shortly after his arrest to a gentleman. and. Um, and during this call, and this is, by the way, not verbatim, okay? I'm not, I'm not quoting him exactly. But he told his friend about his recent arrest, which I believe was on a probation violation, and he said that everything would be okay because he was helping the police solve a murder. And his friend asked, well, what murder was that? He said, yeah, he said nuts murder, and that nut would be the moniker for Donovan Thomas. And his friend scoffed at him and said, but you didn't witness that. And... Uh, the Mr. Wright responded, uh, you know, he basically shushed him, you know, reminding him that they were on a recorded jail line. But regard and imply, and, you know, and the Im Im implication there was that he didn't witness it. And he would prefer that his friend not, um, you know, utter such a thing on a recorded jail phone. And then he said, but it's something to the effect of it doesn't matter. We all know what happened anyway. And it's also worth mentioning that during my interview with Mr. Wright, very sh soon into the interview, something that caught my attention was he said, you see, I've been on Instagram or so again, not verbatim, but he mentioned that he had been on Instagram and putting the pieces together from there, which put up a red flag, made me think that perhaps he was just compiling his statement through rumors that he saw on the internet. So uh, after I heard that jail call, I asked investigator David White. I, I knew who he was talking to. I, I can't recall his name off the top of my head, but the, the gentleman that he was talking to and the same gentleman that said, but you didn't witness that, et cetera. So my investigator reached out to him and, and asked him, well, how did you know that Mr. Wright didn't witness the murder of Donovan Thomas? And he said, well, that murder was a really big deal in the city and I'm pretty close with Mr. Wright and he never mentioned to me that he had witnessed it and it's the kind of thing that he would have mentioned had he witnessed it so at that point I was satisfied that Mr. Wright didn't really witness the murder at all and he just made it up. Why didn't you just go ahead and present the information to the grand jury as had been presented to you by the Atlanta Police Department? A person, people had been arrested. Isn't it that immediately get the case indicted? Objection. <laughs> Who's, uh, who's made the objection? Self-serving. I sustain as to form. You can rephrase it. Um, you can rephrase it. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sprinkle, uh, is there any reason in particular why you did not go ahead and present the indictment to the grand jury with the names and the information that had been given to you from the police department? 
Well, for one thing, I'm not the one who decides what cases are presented to the grand jury, but if I was, I still wouldn't because I, at that point, out of three of the four defendants, I had a complete absence of evidence that they committed the murder at all, and I wouldn't present uh, a case naming a specific individual. I wouldn't present an indictment to a grand jury wherein a specific individual is alleged to have committed a crime when there's complete, when there's a total absence of evidence that they actually committed the crime. That would actually violate state bar rules for me to do that. And Your Honor, um, if the court would, just so that I'm aware, is is there any other party to this um, defendant Stillwell's motion to dismiss that um, I'm unaware of? I have, I, I have not. The court is not unaware of anybody else who's joined in this preparation. Okay. So. Your Honor, if I can answer that, now, uh, uh, Mr. Dorsey. The state keeps saying that because this is RICO, everything applies to everything. I have adopted uh, the motions of everybody, so I, I do reserve right to ask some questions of the witness, Your Honor. But based on the theory that the state says that because it's RICO, everything applies to my client, I do want to make it very clear. I can have nothing to do with this. <laughs> Your Honor, um, this is Shannon Stilwell's assertion of his constitutional right to a speedy trial. Um, I do not believe that um, uh, Mr. Chada uh, or his client have any um, <clears throat> right to assert as it relates to Shannon Stilwell's assertion of his right or the denial thereof to a speedy trial. But and I would ask that the court uh, limit uh, questioning and uh, argument and commentary to the parties that are involved in this particular your, motion. Your Honor, as it relates to Mr. Mark Quavius, he has nothing to do with it as well in terms of the, the specifics of a murder. However, he's a part of this indictment. Yeah, Ms. Ms. Uh, well, the, the issue you're going to have is that since it's a RICO case and anything can be attributed to any other defendant, that's why that they have a, a a right of confrontation as to this. Now, so the specific relief is only only available to Mr. Stillwell, but counsel are entitled to ask other questions as they, as they see fit. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Right. Your Honor, if, if I may, just, just to be clear, on Mr. Williams' behalf, we do claim an interest in the, the outcome and the argument of this motion. Um, we understand it's Mr. Stillwell's motion, but again, as the court has indicated, because this is a RICO indictment, Mr. Williams is charged in it. Uh, he has an interest and an ability to pose objections if necessary. Mm -hmm. Deputy Sprinkle, after um, you determine um, that the information that you have been given um, was inaccurate or could not um, be verified. Did you take additional steps to investigate the homicide, the murder of Donovan Thomas? I did. And would you tell the court whether or not this was a uh, sort of high profile case within the office? It was. And are you able to say what impact the case itself had um, on the office or on the city of Atlanta Objection, that caused it to be a high profile case? Basis. Irrelevant. What does high profile case have to do with anything? All right. I'll Why don't you explain that for our rule? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, the reason that I asked about it being a high profile case is. Um, to uh, sort of lay the groundwork for the fact that the office did not uh, seek to not investigate or to not um, make sure that we got the case right um, by asking if whether it was a high profile case, it's to bring out to the court um, the mindset with which Deputy Sprinkle investigated yeah, I'm going to overrule your objection. Go ahead. Now. I, I just want to be clear. There's... I've overruled your objection. Did that murder uh, carry with it a series of violent shootings within the city of Atlanta? Yes, for for many years following that. Basically. 
Why don't you rephrase? I can do that. Thank you, Judge. Is he After eating? The murder of Donovan Thomas, uh, were there multiple shootings within the city of Atlanta within days, sometimes yeah, weeks, and one of those? Objection, relevance. I have to go on the I'm going to let her finish, okay? And then I'll, I'll okay? All right, go ahead, ma'am. Thank you, Judge. Were there multiple shootings uh, within the city of Atlanta? Yeah. Objection on relevance. I was going to say this to as to leading. Why don't you ask him what what happened as a result of that? If he knows it any. After the murder of Donovan Thomas, and let me back up. Um, were there any gang implications to the investigation? In other words, during your investigation and during your initial review of the file, was there any indication from the information that you had within the file? that the murder was gang related? Yes. And what gangs were alleged to have been involved? Uh, Englewood family, that was the gang to which Mr. Donovan Thomas was a member, a high-ranking member, uh, and the other gang was YSL or Young Slime Life to which uh, Mr. Williams was a member. Did you um, gain no, knowledge? I'm gonna object to that Basis. answer. Basis. Specula speculation and after to be stricken. I said, I'm going to overrule the objection. What's your objection? Um, it's a legal conclusion. Criminal street gang is a legal, legally defined term as to be determined by both people from the city. From that may be that may be in front of a jury, but he, he, this is his, this is the district attorney's investigation. I'm going to overrule your objection. And, and Your Honor, so just so I'm clear, uh, we are speaking just in, in layman's terms when we say gang at this moment, not in legal terms. Um, I'm still going to overrule your objection, okay? Thank you. And during the weeks and months following Donovan Thomas's murder, did you have information that led you to believe that a series of retaliatory shootings between YSL and Inglewood family took place across the city of Atlanta. I'm going to object because it calls for hearsay. Your Honor. Go ahead. Your Honor, the defendant, Shannon Stilwell, has alleged an intentional delay on the part of the state. What led us to further our investigation and what information we had? Goes to conduct? Yes. All right, I must overrule the objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Definitely sounds like he's eating crunch and munch. That led you to believe that a series of retaliatory shootings between YSL and Inglewood family happened after Donovan Thomas was murdered. Yes, there were cases where the victims were identified as YSL or Englewood family, and the shooters were also identified as YSL or Englewood family. And commonly, the shooters would generally be in the rival gang. I, I'm, I don't want to say there were no cases that involved the same members of the same gang shooting at each other, but prim primarily it was opposing gangs that were shooting at each other. The participants that were identified were in opposing gangs. Those two gangs specifically, yes. Okay. And during that time, um, did you and the Fulton County District Attorney's Office gang unit work closely with the Atlanta Police Department in an effort to solve the murder of Donovan Thomas, as well as find out whether or not those series of shootings were related, in fact, to the murder of Donovan Thomas? The gang unit, uh, the office's gang unit, I, I believe they were in consultation with Detective Thorpe, uh, but uh, I don't recall speaking with Detective Thorpe prior to him obtaining warrants for the arrest of the four men that he originally charged. And that is before the arrest of the persons that were originally charged. I am speaking of during the months in the year 2015, 2016, did you obtain more information that led you to believe that the murder of Donovan Thomas was gang related. Right, well, yeah, I would routinely consult with uh, Detective Tyrone Dennis with the Atlanta Police Department. He also worked very, very closely on the murder case and can, you know, alongside Detective Jim Thorpe Jr. And were there incidents, uh, shooting incidents that took place uh, and other incidents that took place that involved members of the alleged offending gang or YSL? 
Yes, uh, either, as I said, the victim was identified as being in one gang or the other. The shooters were identified as being in the opposite gang. There were shell casings that, when placed under microscopes and the tool mark on the back of the casing was compared to various incidents, they would find that the that similar guns, or the same guns, I should say, were used in these various incidents, which could possibly uh, indicate that the same participants were involved. And did you prepare a supplemental report to the case file that you have been given by Detective Thor in order to outline uh, the investigation that you conducted in this case between the time that you received it and November 13, 2018? Yes. I am showing to you what has been marked as State's Exhibit 1. <clears throat> Ms. Uh, Love, we're going to just use the next exhibit in order. So what's that, Ms. Rosenwasser? 11. Would the court like for me to then label it state? State's 11. Yes, ma'am. If you yes. wouldn't mind, please. I sure will. I'm showing you what has been marked as state's exhibit 11. SS. Would you take a look at it, and Your Honor, I will, um, at the end of this tendering of this exhibit, ask that the court allow me to tender a digital copy of this uh, as yes. evidence. Under seal. Okay. Yes, I've looked at State's Exhibit 11. Does State's Exhibit 11 uh, contain the supplemental that you prepared outlining and detailing the investigation that you conducted up until November 13th of 2018. Uh, it does, but as you can see, uh, I brought a copy of my report to the stand with me anyway, and it looks like there may be a, a page missing from this one because my report has uh, a, a page that only has about two sentences on it, but so this may be a page short, basically. Okay. And just and you are, uh, Shop, you could please be a copy of the report that he had. Oh, never mind. There it is. Yeah. Okay. If it was, or after you just uh, testify that we just appreciate we get a copy of what you're to He would be entitled to. He would be required to update that particular as part of continuing discovery. So, to the extent, Miss Love, you have not done that, go ahead and do so. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. Deputy Springle, would you please clarify for the court whether or not the page you were referencing is contained within State's Exhibit 11? It is. You just turn the page over. It turns out it was, I guess it was facing the wrong way. So, no, that's my full report. Thank you. Your Honor, State, State's Exhibit 11, and with the court's permission, I would like to enter it digitally under seal. Okay. Um, so, Grand? Your Honor, I object. And Your Honor? Basis? Um, is this part of the order that I entered before? No, it, it's not. Why do you want to enter it under seal, madam? Only because it contains um, information, um, personal information about witnesses. The defense has been provided this report on August the 8th, I believe, 2022, in its entirety. I am happy to let defense counsel look at it, review it, and compare it to their copy of the discovery that has been previously served. Um, okay. My issue is not with under seal per se. But then I'm going to seal it then, okay? Well, All my, right. No, it's not with that. My issue is admitting uh, we're having a deal. Well, you're, it's okay. Hearsay. No, but you've, you've made it an issue for the purposes of your of your speedy trial demand. Right. So they're introducing as part of what they, as, if I understand it, given the factors, um, is that what they did and the reason for the delay is that what you're doing miss love yes. so i mean so that's why is that's why they're introducing it for the per for that limited purpose so with all due respect your honor he, he can testify to what he did he just did but i but in terms of the case if the case goes up on appeal then then of course the appellate court will have an opportunity to take a look at it, it, it for the record i would just like to say that there's a lot more in that report than what he's testified to through live testimony 
And we are objecting to uh, conducting this hearing through proffer, which is essentially what we're doing. Well, you got live testimony because you haven't even you haven't even examined Mr. Sprinkle yet. So you certainly will be able to do that. But I'm going to admit it uh, and seal it over your objection, States 11. Okay, and you'll be able to get with Miss Love and her colleagues and take a look at it. The original that the the, the, the uh, discovery that you were provided back in August in uh, in relation to this particular document, and the state will need to up of course disclose or. Uh, lets you give you that particular evidence, um, anything discovery they haven't done so far, okay? And we will be able to cross examine Mr. Sprinkle on all of the contents of that document that's being admitted into evidence. But I want to make sure we're able to do it. If they're introducing into evidence, yeah, you get to cross them about anything you want in terms of that particular document. Thank you, Honor. He's coming up, the next 10 witnesses. Deputy One Sprinkle. of them is Michael Sprinkle. Did your investigation into the murder of Donovan Thomas cease entirely as of November 13, 2018? No, it didn't. Would you just briefly encapsulate some of the additional investigations um, that you participated in or conducted um, between 2018 and May 2021? Okay, so um, in 2019, there were at least two gang-related murders that involved the YSL Street Gang and the Englewood Family Street Gang. Um, one was a February 23rd, 2019 murder involving a victim named Jamari Holmes and uh, some YSL gang members named Damone Blaylock and Redalius Ryan. I did a lot of that. I did a lot of work on that case. I uh, but for purposes of this hearing, I did a search warrant to Instagram for, I believe it was four or five accounts of belonging to YSL gang members. Now, the reason why is that search warrant was for the accounts of the people that were participants in the February 23rd, 2019 murder of Jamari Holmes, of course. But with any search warrant that I did for concerning either one of those gangs, the murder of Donovan Thomas was always really just on the front of my mind because that mm -hmm. Why? it was the murder of Donovan Thomas that was essentially the primary genesis of the of the dispute between these two gangs that had claimed the lives of so many people and wounded count, uh, countless others so I always when investigating any case Your Honor, this is irrelevant. Madam Your Honor Deputy Sprinkle is talking about the investigation that he continued to conduct into the murder of Donovan Thomas and why it is um, that he did what he did during that investigation. If again, the state's intent is at issue, um, Mr. Sprinkle's steps taken during the investigation are reflective of the state's intent. <laughs> okay, I'll overrule your objection, sir. What is it you want to tell me? I mean, I've overruled the objection, so what, what more do you want me to know? The state just proffered evidence, and I don't think that's correct, Your Honor. They, they well, then cross-examine him when you got him, when you got him on cross. I, I understand. So you're a little, little you know, you're a little early, oh my okay? Gosh. When you got him, when you got him on cross, you can ask him these questions that you're that you want that you're not allowing them to answer right now. But it's relevant for the purposes of delay and the reason for delay. So can we move on from that? Okay. In May of 2021. Um, was the case involving the murder of Donovan Thomas turned over to a specific team in the district attorney's office as part of a broader investigation? It was. All right, and who was it turned over to? Don Geary was the primary attorney on the case. And is that case, um, or did that case form the basis for the indictment that the defendant sits on today charged with both the murder of Donovan Thomas and the murder of Shamel Drake. 
Yes, uh, yes, it is because uh, I, I at that point was consulting with my coworkers and recommending that we pursue an indictment on the the murder case. At which point, um, uh, it would the others just determined that a team should be assembled because this case was encompassed a lot more than just the murder of Donovan Thomas. So at that point, my case file was handed, but that was the that was the first step was my investigation into the murder of Donovan Thomas. And then I wasn't working very closely with them. I would ask, I would of course answer their questions of which they had many when they had them, but I wasn't in a room working with them on a daily basis. But from what I understood and what would eventually see when the indictment came out was they were working on this vast RICO case. And are you aware of a wiretap uh, being used to gain information uh, in furtherance of the investigation of this RICO case that you referenced just now? Yeah, I drafted all the documents associated with it and performed the minimization procedures and reviewed the, the periodically would spot review the work of the monitors. And was that in April 2022? I believe so. Yeah, yeah I believe so. April 2022, I think towards the end of that month. Yes. And did the investigation uh, that took place between the time that you were given the file by Detective Thorpe and the time that this case was initially presented to the grand jury uh, formed the basis for the indictment 22SC183572. Yes. Thank you. Just one moment, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. So the point of at least this in part is well, why was this indictment so delayed? The defense is bringing challenges on the delays happening, um, but the state, they have to establish a reason, a basis. And Sprinkles here saying, look, we didn't have enough back in 2015, 2016, 2017. Um, they didn't want to move forward. But lo and behold, we have enough to get these wiretaps and then some of the information we got from these wiretaps was enough for this indictment to actually suddenly be underway. Between November 2018 and May 2021, did you work with any other prosecutors on this case or on the investigation involving the murder of Donovan Thomas? Uh, well... Did you at any time work with Deputy Kara Convery? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, Deputy Kara Convery and I spoke about this case and exchanged information on a regular basis throughout the entirety of the investigation. And where did Deputy Kara Convery work within the district attorney's office? She was the head of the gang unit. I don't recall which year. I know Gabe Banks was the head right when the case came in. I believe you were the head of the gang unit at some point. And then Kara Convery, probably by 2019. And now Gabe Banks is a defense attorney. We saw him. He was the one making arguments um, about the show cause order for Kayla Bumpus. She was the head of the gang unit. Was there ever a time, Deputy Sprinkle, that you delayed this case to get a tactical advantage over the defendant, Shannon Steelwell? No, 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 I didn't want to delay the case at all. And was this a case of average complexity? No, uh, no, this is, a, this is an extremely complex case. Just one moment, Young. That's all that I have for now. All right, Mr. Shark, go ahead, sir. Mr. Sprinkle, how are you doing today? Very well, sir. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. Um, as I understand it, uh, your role in the DA's office is you receive a case file from APD. So, well, I mean, many times, most of the time, actually, from APD, but there are other agencies in, Atlanta, in Fulton County, of course. And you work on that case file and bring it, bring it up, build it up for indictment 
um, if you feel that is warranted. Correct. Okay. But you did tell us that you are not the person who decides when to indict the case. That's correct. Who is that person? Uh, well, back in 2015, 2016? Yes. That would have been the district attorney, Paul Howard. That was Mr. Howard back in 2015 and 2016. Okay. Um, how long did Mr. Howard have that decision-making power on when Shannon Stilwell would be indicted on the 2015 case? Well, presumably all the way up until the last day of 2020. I, I believe that was the last day he was in office. I could be wrong about that, but it would have definitely been around that time. And who <clears throat> took over that decision-making power in 2020? Uh, the current DA, Bonnie Willis, and her, uh, and, and her agents, people like myself and Adam Boddy and Pat Dusher. Okay. So when Ms. Love asks if you delayed the indictment to get a tactical advantage on Shannon Stilwell, it wasn't even your decision, was it? That is correct. That is correct. That question about choosing when to indict from 2015 to 2020 should be asked of Paul Howard, correct? I Objection, cannot. Your Honor. Basis. The question about whether or not the decision to be indict uh, to indict should be sure should have been left to Paul Howard um, is not uh, proper. Does not speak to um, Deputy Sprinkles um, uh, actions and um, steps that he took during this investigation in order to make sure that it was thoroughly vetted. They tried to create the impression that Mr. Sprinkles, the one that made called the shots, and he's clearly not. And now that I've asked him about it, and it's clear he didn't. Now it's irrelevant. They asked him if he delayed the indictment of Shannon Stilwell. I'm saying it was delayed, and my client has been prejudiced, and I want to hear from the person who made that decision. Well, um, it's one factor that I'll weigh, Mr. Shard, so go ahead and move on. So we've had another district attorney since then, and it's part of the overall investigation. So his, his, his response might be, his, I'm assuming it's correct, but certainly has to be looked at in terms of the continuum of other things that went on in this case. So, and I'm sure you're going to examine him about those. Yes, Your Honor. And, and, and so starting in 2020, the decision-making was uh, DA Bonnie Willis. 2021, yes. 2021. All right. Okay. When was... Shannon is still well charged in this case. I, want, I believe it was September 2015. Okay. Um, if, I, if I suggested that was October 2015, would you dispute me on that? No, I wouldn't. Okay. And would you dispute that he was arrested in October of 2015? I'm quite sure it would have been around that time, the last quarter of 2015, uh, based on when I received the case file. That would be in line with that. And he was placed in jail? He was. Now, my client, Mr. Stilwell, was charged in 2015, October 2015. Who else did you say was charged at that time? Antonio Sledge, briefly, because his case was dismissed at the preliminary hearing. Okay. Kenneth Copeland and Demeke and Garlington. Thank you, Michelle. They're really the interesting Kenneth in Copeland retrospect. And that's on the state's witnesses. Yes. And it was Detective Thorpe of... APD that made a decision to charge my client, Mr. Stilwell? Yes. And it was Detective Thorpe of APD who made the decision to charge Mr. Sumlin, Mr. Copeland, and Mr. Garlington? Mr. Copeland, Mr. Garlington, I, th I believe you meant to say Mr. Sledge? Sledge, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. I, I said Sumlin instead of Sledge. Yes. And you're telling us that the decision to charge those four individuals was based on the word of Spencer Wright? Well, for three out of four of them, it, if, if my memory serves correctly, it was essentially entirely based on Spencer Wright. Your client, there was a little bit more evidence. And we're going to get to that, and I okay. appreciate you bringing that up. So, but for the other three, well, for all four, a man named Spencer Wright claimed to be at the scene of the murder and named those people as being involved. That's, yes. And when Spencer Wright... Are you aware of the circumstances that brought Spencer Wright into contact with Detective Thorpe to tell Detective Thorpe this? Generally, yes. Did, did Spencer Wright have pending charges? 
Spencer Wright had been, if I memory serves correctly, I know that he didn't just show up to the precinct out of the goodness of his heart. He had been pulled over, if I remember correctly. During the traffic stop, he threw a gun away in the bathroom at the gas station. He lied about his name, and there was an investigator, just Gaither, Lakia Gaither, just happened to recognize him and reminded him of what his name actually was. So those, and he was, uh, so he had a firearm, and I believe he had a probation violation. And Gaither did not want to answer questions about this name thing. So he was taken into custody contemporaneously with his statement. And so we're clear, you wouldn't dispute that Spencer Wright had a motive to lie? Yes. That would be correct? Yes. Okay. And Spencer Wright actually came in at the same time that he named these four individuals as being involved in this murder and gave police a false name? He did at first, and they one of them, like I said, just happened to know him. And this is all from memory, but I'm pretty sure this is correct. So he lied about his name? He did. And the police knew this? Uh, yes, they did. And they took his word on who to arrest on a murder. That's what happened, yes. Okay. And your, through your investigation, you would agree um, that three of the four defendants in this case have changed since then regarding the 2015 shoot. Three out of the four, which, okay, so first of all, what do you mean by change and which three defendants are we there talking about? There was four about? people that were charged in October of 2015 by Detective Thorpe. Mm. Three of those four people are no longer charged. Oh, I understand. In other words, we did we ultimately indict a different set of people than were ultimately charged by the police. Is that your question? Yes. Yes, that's correct. We did indict Shannon Stillwell, aka Shannon Jackson, who's your client, but we did not charge Mr. Copeland, Mr. Garlington, or Mr. Sledge with the murder of Donovan Thomas. Well, let's be clear. They were charged. They were charged by the police, yes. And they were arrested and put in jail. They were, yes. Based on the word Spencer Wright. That is correct. Who lied about his name? He did. And in those three people's place that were eventually released, three new people have been charged. That's well, three, yes, there were four people actually, but yes. Okay. Three new people and Mr. Stillwell. Yes. Okay. So essentially, what we're saying in, in layman's terms is Detective Thorpe added 250. Objection, Your Honor. Relevant Faces. and and just unnecessary. Detective Thorpe batted 250. I'm a sustaining objection. So we've, you, you have your report, correct? I do. All right. And your report um, is oh, approximately 100 pages long? 140, I believe. 140. Okay. And you began working in January of 2016? That's correct, yes. And on page two of those 140, well, let, let, let me back up, I'm sorry. Almost the first order of business in this report is your concerns about Spencer Wright. Correct, that is, that is how my investigation began. Because you were doing a thorough investigation and you looked at the video and noticed the man who was saying he witnessed event was not where he said it. Correct. And so your report, this 140 page report, begins with discussion of the video when Spencer Wright. Yes. On page two of the report, um, in the first paragraph, you talk about um, Detective Thorpe um, finding probable cause for these four individuals that are originally charged. Yes. And then you say, Kenneth Copeland, Demi King Garlington, and Antonio Sledge, or I'm sorry, you say Copeland, Garlington, and Sledge consisted almost entirely of the statement of Mr. Spencer Wright, correct? Correct. All right. You went on to say, with respect, or to Wright, with respect to Mr. Jackson, Mr. Wright also implicated him in the statement summarized below. However, there was another witness named Quindarius Zachary that also implicated That's Mr. Lil Jackson. That's Lil D. That is correct. Okay. So, on page two of the report, you were saying that there was an additional witness against, when I say Mr. Jackson, you were calling Mr. Jackson report, but it's my client, Mr. Stillwell. Yeah, back then he was known as Shannon Jackson. That's why I say okay. Shan Jackson, a.k.a. Shan Stillwell, or vice versa. All right. You, as the investigator, did not have the same doubts or concerns about Mr. Jackson's case or Mr. Stillwell's case than you did with the other three defendants based on additional witness testimony, correct? 
Well, I mean, I at least have some evidence that he committed the murder. Yes. Okay. All right. And, and just to be clear, in January 2016, when you're working on this case and throughout your investigation, um, Shannon Stilwell is still presumed innocent in jail. He was in jail for about 250 days, I believe, on the murder charge before he was transferred, I want to say, to the Department of Corrections on unrelated matter. Oh, yes, he was in jail, yes. And, and he, he didn't bond out on this case until, on the 2015 case, until October of 2018, isn't that true? I recall, if I remember correctly, he was booked into the jail on October 23rd and made bond the next day because he had obviously gotten a bond long before then because he had been in jail over 90 days on the murder. Right, but he was in jail for three years. On the murder? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't believe he was jailed for three years. I believe he was in jail for about about 250 days on the okay, well, well, we'll say 250 days. I mean, that's a substantial amount of time, correct? But I, legally, I, 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 it, it's subjective as to what's substantial. Okay. Well, you wouldn't want an innocent man locked in jail for that long. Objection. Argumentative. <clears throat> it's my statement, Mr. Foreman. Thank you, Judge. Okay. okay. Are you an ethical prosecutor? Yes. And for the record, I believe Mr. Sprinkle is. Okay. okay. Um... If you felt that there was no case against Mr. Stilwell like you thought about the others, you would presumably have done something to get his release, correct? Right. What I would have done is uh, I would have uh, told his uh, defense attorneys that essentially there was no evidence, which is what I did with the other co-defendants. So. Okay. Right. But uh, with Mr. Stilwell, the, the, the absence of evidence wasn't quite as stark. Okay. And so you didn't take any proactive steps to seek the release of Mr. Stilwell, like you did the others? No. Okay. How long has, to your knowledge, are, are, are you familiar with the internal workings of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office? Pre uh, pretty familiar. I've been working there for over a decade, so. How long has the Fulton County District Attorney's Office been investigating YSL? On it, it really, it, I can't speak to what the gang unit was doing at around this time. They, uh, they were in a section of the office to which I didn't have access. Now, if I knocked on the door, if they were there, they would generally let me in. But I didn't just have, I didn't just have unfettered access to their area such that I could wander in at any given point. So they, they were by design closed off from the rest of the office. Well, certainly, you were aware generally of whether there was an as you were working this Donovan Thomas case, whether there was an active investigation to YSF. Yes, there was. And so, so to answer your question, to the best of my knowledge, uh, as far as I know, knew, or as far as I can remember, the investigation into YSL really started with the murder of Donovan Thomas. Okay, so 2015. And what about investigations into Jeffrey Williams? Objection, Your Honor. Relevant? <laughs> uh, I'm alleging that this has been a strategic decision to withhold the prosecution of Shannon Stilwell, who they claim to have had a case with or against, a solid case against, since 2015. And I want to know why they waited eight years to bring this well, case. Well, why don't you ask him? Well, I want to know what uh, I'll, I'll, I'll owe the objection. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and ask him, please. To your knowledge, how long have you had an investigation ongoing, when I say you, the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, against Jeffrey Williams? For, well, for me personally, it would have been around... Yeah, I want to say April of 2016 when I uh, found out that he rented the car that was utilized in the drive-by shooting. Okay. What about not you personally, the Fulton County District Attorney's Office? That I can't answer. As far as I know, there, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. If, it, if there were any other investigations regarding Mr. Jeffrey Williams, I don't know about that. Well, could you answer if you knew, do you believe that you were the first person to begin an investigation into Jeffrey Williams, or do you believe that there was already investigations into Jeffrey Williams? Objection, well, Your Honor, relevance into investigations regarding Jeffrey Williams. Uh, I'll sustain the objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Did you have discussions with Paul Howard about the Donovan Thomas case? Yes. How often? Well, there would obviously, uh, I, every, really, every few months, Actually, maybe it, there were there were times it would actually be more often than that. It, it was definitely not one or two. I can tell you that it was more than it was more than that. Was he familiar with the facts of the case as alleged? Yes. Um, would Mr. Paul Howard have had access to the gang unit of the district attorney's office that you did not have unfettered access to? 
I would presume yes. I guess I never asked him, nor did he ever tell me. It never came up. But given that he was the head of the entire office, I would assume that he had access to every room of the office. Do, but I'm only assuming. Do leaders of different units within the office meet with each other? Yes, yes. Is there coordination between units in the district attorney's office? Yes, of course. Was there coordination between units back in 2015? Yes. Could there have been discussions that you were not privy to about these matters? I'm sure. <clears throat> Mr. Sprinkle, you have, um, is it fair to say that you mm -hmm. largely have an investigative function within the district attorney's office? Well, yes, for the most part. But you all are also an attorney. I am. Uh, you have a bar card. I do. You're familiar with the laws of, uh, the rules of evidence in Georgia? Yes. Okay. You would agree that we're in here today not on a murder case, but a large RICO case, which one part of it has an alleged murder. I am familiar with the indictment that is before the court that is being litigated right now. And I am familiar that the primary or the first count or couple of counts is a RICO case. As far as I'm concerned, I was primarily, if not really exclusively, concerned with the murder of Donovan Thomas. Correct. But you are aware that this indictment that we're all in here today involves more than just the 2015 shooting of Donovan Thomas. I'm aware of that, yes. Okay. And there are four people that you chose to charge and indict. Well, we'll get to that. There's four people that you advised the state to indict for the murder of Donovan Thomas. Uh, well, I, I believe there are five. And uh, I, I was definitely part of meetings regarding the indictment. But again, this is really Don Geary that was that was leading the, the charge on who to indict for the murder. Now, was I influential? Of course. But I wasn't, the, again, I wasn't the one who ultimately made that decision. But you weren't the one to make a decision. When was this case ready to take to the grand jury? The, uh, the alleged murder of Donovan Thomas was uh, well, it wasn't an alleged murder. He absolutely was murdered. Uh, it was May of 2022. Oh, it wasn't ready. No. When, when was the case presented to the grand jury? When was it ready to take to the grand jury? Uh, I, I can't, again, because Don Geary was the attorney that was working on that, and I wasn't, I, I, well, I guess it was ready when we presented it, right? I, I would assume. Well, that's when you, your office chose to present it. Yes. I'm asking when it was ready. I, I, I don't, you would have to ask Don Geary that. Okay. Because as you said, this is more than just the murder of Donovan Thomas. is a big RICO case. So. I'm aware of that, but I'm very interested in when the singular incident, the January, January 2015 shooting of Donovan Thomas was ready to present to the grand jury. I, I would just have to say May of 2022, unless you can define the word ready a little with a little more specificity. That's when your office decided to present it. Is your answer. Right. Correct. Mr. Trump, hold on one second. All right. So I don't know why it actually cut off there. Um, I will look and see if there's a part two to that hearing, but court coincidentally exactly just now came back. So let me know your thoughts on that Michael Sprinkle hearing. Again, that was December 20th, 2022. While uh, Don Geary had already left, it was in the hands of Lizzie R., who ended up leaving in January of 2023. And Michael Sprinkle will be called as a witness soon. He's one of the next named 10 witnesses. So uh, and where some of those wiretap calls will be coming in. So let me know your thoughts on that, you guys. Floor is yours.